Hello and welcome to Talking Golf with Gary. This week, the dynamic Gary will introduce you to all kinds of topics pertinent to this past week of golf. He'll give you some tidbits of information as what's coming up and take you on a tour around the world for all of the golfing highlights. Sit back and enjoy Talking Golf with Gary. Hello and welcome to another episode of... 152 of Talking Golf with Gary. It's a little bit different look and a different sound uh, this week as as we are on the road and uh, taking a little vacation, but wanted to get uh, an episode in uh, just for you as it was a great week in golf. Another exciting, uh, quite a full week of tournaments and things. So uh, let's get right to it as... uh, uh, Bill Haas defeated both uh, Phil Mickelson and Keegan Bradley in a playoff to win the Northern Trust Open. Uh, Bill Haas knows anything is possible, uh, even from the most dire situations, as uh, if you remember, he won a FedEx Cup with uh, uh, a really a great shot uh, from Muck and Meyer. Uh, partially, uh, his ball was partially submerged in a lake. And he made a terrific shot up to the green to save his par. And uh, went on from there to win a FedEx Cup. And he was at Riviera this week doing it again, coming from behind. And getting into a three-way playoff and in a thick rough behind a 10th green during the second hole of a three-man playoff with Phil Mickelson and Keegan Bradley. Haas smartly played away from the flag with hopes of just making a par and going on to the next hole. He wound up holding a 45-foot birdie putt across the green to win the Northern Trust Open. Mickelson and Bradley worked their own heroics just to get into the playoff. Haas, who closed with a 2-under 69, was on the practice range at 7-under as he warmed up for a playoff only he thought might happen. He was trying to convince himself that Mickelson or Bradley, or maybe even both of them, would make birdie on the 18th hole, even though it had yielded only six birdies all day. Mickelson rammed in a birdie putt from just outside 25 feet, pointing his putter and slamming his his fist as the gallery packed into the hill below the clubhouse and let out a cheer that could be heard all over L.A. Bradley's birdie putt from just outside 12 feet took one last slow turn at the cup and disappeared, setting off another enormous cheer. No one had to tell Haas what was happening. They started the playoff on 18, and Bradley had the best look at birdie with a 15-footer from just off the back of the green that touched the right side of the cup. It was decided on a 312 10th hole, regarded as the best short par 4 in America, certainly among the most interesting holes in all of golf. It can be reached with a drive, but it's all about position, and none were in a particularly good spot. Haas went long into the thick rough, with enough of the back bunker in his way that he smartly played out of the right and left himself a long birdie putt that at least would assure him par. Mickelson and Bradley each came up short and at a horrible angle. Mickelson's flop shot landed near the hole and rolled into the back bunker. Bradley was in the bunker and did well to blast out to 15 feet just through the green. Haas ended the suspense with his putt. Bradley, who closed with a 71, missed his birdie putt after Mickelson, who also had a 71, failed to hold his bunker shot. Mickelson, who rallied from six shots behind with a 64 to win last week at Pebble Beach, was trying to become the first player since Tiger Woods in August of 2009 to win back-to-back on the PGA Tour. And Kenny Perry had a record-setting weekend as he shot a 2-under-70 to win his second Champions Tour title, cruising to a five-shot victory in the Ace Group Classic. Perry birdied three of his first eight holes, and no one ever got closer than four shots after that. Perry totaled 24 birdies, too short of the tour record for a 54-hole event, and tied Alan Doyle for the largest margin of victory in the 25-year-old tournament. Last year's Champion Tour Rookie of the Year set the tour's 36-hole scoring record in relation to par at 18 under, following a 62 in Saturday's second round. 
Defending champion Bernhard Langer eagled number 17 for the third straight day and finished in second place after a 70. A bogey on the final hole dropped Perry into a tie with Langer for the tournament scoring record Langer set last year. Tom Lehman, the 2011 Player of the Year, was in second for most of the day, but bogeyed number 12 and the par 5 17th after hitting in the water. He finished at even par to tie Bill Glasson and Mike Goodies for third. First round leader Larry Mize with ties for second on the last hole, but put two balls into the water and dropped to seventh with a 75. After two calm days resulted in low scores, wind gusts topped 70 miles per hour during the final round. Perry also won the SAS championship in October, a day after his sister died of breast cancer, and two years to the day since Perry's mother also succumbed to cancer. Perry had previously won twice in Naples, teaming with John Houston in 2005 and Scott Hoke in 2008 at the Franklin Templeton Shootout, an unofficial PGA Tour event. And Yanni Zhang defended her title as she watched Ai Miyazato's approach on the 18th hole of the LPGA Thailand and knew she had to come up with an equally impressive shot to avoid a possible playoff. Zeng met the challenge with a shot fitting her number one ranking, controlling the spin perfectly to set up a tap-in putt. The 23-year-old Taiwanese star successfully defended her title for her 13th LPGA Tour victory, matching Miyazato with birdies on the final two holes to hold off her Japanese friend by a stroke. Zeng closed with a 6-under 66 to finish at 19-under 269. She opened with a 73, then shot consecutive 65s to enter the final round a shot behind Miyazato. Last year, Zhang won the event for the first of her seven 2011 LPGA Tour victories, including major victories in the LPGA Championship and the Women's British Open. The five-time major champion finished the year with 12 worldwide victories. She has 13 career worldwide professional victories. Miyazato finished with a 67. South Korea's Ji Yai Shin tied for the lead with Thang after a birdie of her own on the par 4 17th had a 67 to finish two strokes back. South Korea's Amy Yang shot a 69 to finish fourth at 14 under. 16 year old Thai amateur Araya Jutanogam followed her third round 65 with a 74 to tie for 12 to 7 under. She played the final five holes and four over, making a double bogey seven on number 18. Last year, Jutanguam won the U.S. Junior Girls Championship and was the Rolex Junior Player of the Year. And Job Kruger of South Africa won his first European Tour title on Sunday, protecting his overnight lead by shooting a 3-under 69 for a two-shot victory at the Avantha Masters. The 25-year-old Kruger made four birdies and overcame a bogey on the 17th to finish at 14-under. Jorge Campillo of Spain and Marcel Ciem of Germany were two shots back in a tie for second. Jose Manuel Lara of Spain and Australian Marcus Frazier finished joint fourth at 11 under. Kruger finished second on the Asian Tour three times in 2010, while his best previous result on the European Tour was third at the Africa Open the same year. His best on this year's European Tour has been ninth at the Joburg Open in South Africa. And Skip Kendall rolled in a 20-foot birdie putt on the second, 72nd hole to win the Pacific Rubulus Columbia Championship, the first tournament on the 2012 Nationwide Tour schedule. Kendall needed only an even par 71 at the Country Club in Bogota to claim his third career title. Kendall finished at 10 under 274, but had to wait to see if fellow third round co-leader and playing partner Andrew Swoboda would make his 20 foot birdie putt that would have forced a playoff. Swoboda's putt came up inches short, putting Kendall back in the winner's circle for the first time since the 2011 Chittimaca Louisiana Open. 
at 47, 5 months and 10 days, Kendall also becomes the fourth oldest to win in tour history. Subota held the lead during much of the final round after a birdie at number 5, but couldn't muster any more and played the final 9 holes 2 over. His 1 over 72 left him at 9 under and tied with Andres Gonzalez who shot a 3 under 68 and was done at 9 under and hoping for a playoff. James Hahn and 49-year-old Kirk Triplett tied for fourth two shots back of Kendall. Swoboda and Kendall began the final in a share of the lead with Triplett only one back. Kendall was forced to chase the lead after starting his day with back-to-back bogeys. Kendall, veteran of 591 combined starts on the PGA Tour and Nationwide Tour, hung tough and canned a couple of birdies to take sole possession of the lead midway through the back nine. Kendall stumbled with a bogey at number 16 to drop into a tie. He and Swoboda came to the 570-yard 18th still tied for the lead. Kendall was able to sink that putt and take home the trophy. And Australia's Lindsay Wright made a 13-foot birdie putt on the par 5 18th for a 4-under 68 and a one-stroke victory Sunday in the New Zealand Women's Open. Wright finished at 10-under 206 at Pegasus Golf Club in the event sanctioned by the Ladies European Tour and Australian Ladies Professional Golf. The 32-year-old former Pepperdine player is a regular on the LPGA Tour. American Allison Walsh and Australia's Jessica Speechley tied for second. Walsh closed with a 69 and Speechley had a 65. Canada's Laurie Kane and Australia's Stephanie Na shot 69 to tie for fourth at 8 under. 14-year-old Lydia Ko, part of a six-way tie for the second round lead, shot 75 to tie for 17th at 4 under. The South Korean-born New Zealander, the world's top-ranked amateur, becomes the youngest winner of a professional tour event, uh, became the youngest winner of a professional tour event last month in the Women's New South Wales Open. So lots of action this week, and uh, we're going to take a break and be right back as soon as we find out where these messages are. For all the listeners of Talking Golf with Gary, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 14-day trial to give you a chance to check out their service. Over 75,000 titles to choose from in many different categories, including science fiction, mysteries, biographies, sports, computers, you name it, they have it. To download your free audiobook today, Go to audiblepodcast.com slash Talking Golf with Gary. Again, that's audiblepodcast.com slash Talking Golf with Gary for your free audiobook today. You can now hear our show while on the go with Stitcher Smart Radio. On-demand news, talk, and more on your mobile phone. The latest episode is always available for you. No syncing needed and no memory or storage wasted. Available for your iPhone, Android phone, WebOS phone, or your BlackBerry. Downloading is easy. Go to Stitcher.com or check out your app store. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. And in other golf news, Tiger Woods has decided that he is going to return to the Honda Classic for the first time since he was an amateur. Woods announced on his website that he would play the Match Play Championship next week in Arizona, followed by the Honda Classic and the Cadillac Championship at Doral. The Honda Classic is March 1st to the 4th at PGA National. It's the second time this year Woods has added a tournament, not typically on his schedule. He played the Pebble Beach National Pro-Am last week for the first time in 10 years, closing with a 75 to plummet from competition. 
Woods played the Honda Classic in 1993 as a 17-year-old when it was held at Weston Hills. He had rounds of 72 and 78 and missed the cut. I've heard great things about the Honda Classic, and now that I live here, I want to play whenever possible, Woods said. Jack Nicholas' involvement in the tournament and the benefits to the local community are also important. With the tournament being in Woods' backyard, the decision seems to make a lot of sense from a log- logistical standpoint. But the fact that he decided to add the Honda means Woods is making good on his promise last year to play at least one new event this season. And sticking with Tiger Woods, Hall of Fame golfer Lee Trevino has some advice for Tiger. Become a student of Butch Harmon again. Harmon is currently Phil Mickelson's teacher and a former instructor for Woods. Harmon worked with Woods from 1996 when he won his third U.S. Amateur Championship until August 2002. Woods won eight majors and played some of his most dominating golf under Harmon's watchful eye, including his 15-stroke victory at the U.S. Open at Pebble Beach in 2000. Trevino, who won six majors on the PGA Tour in his career, said he believes both Woods and Harmon should bury the hatchet and work with each other. Woods has worked with teacher Hank Haney after his departure with Harmon and is now with Sean Foley. Uh, Trevino said Woods doesn't trust what he's doing yet. He can't drive the ball, Trevino said. That's the problem. He doesn't stay down long enough on the ball. Augusta would be the only one he has a shot at winning if he drives it poorly. He's not going to win the U.S. Open or PGA because there's too much rough. And Natalie Gulbis is in the 2012 Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. Gulbis is not actually wearing a swimsuit in any of the photos in the magazine because it's all body painting. Gulbis is one of three athletes included in the body painting section of the 2012 SI swimsuit issue. Pics of Gulbis' body painting can be found at sai.com slash swimsuit. And that's going to wrap it up for this week. We are on the road, as I said. And please listen to us weekly at the uh, website, and that is at tgwg.podomatic.com and on Stitcher Smart Radio. And you can get the free app for uh, uh, Stitcher Radio at stitcher.com slash Talking Golf with Gary. And we're also now on TuneIn.com. So uh, you, if you have those for your smartphones, your Android, your iPhone, your uh, um, BlackBerry, whatever, TuneIn or Stitcher, either one, you can download the apps for those and get the show. And as well, uh, we are also on iTunes, the old familiar iTunes. And you can view the podcast at uh, youtube.duffersports or at Vimeo, also Duffer Sports. And while you're online, visit the online store at www.zazzle.com slash Talking Golf with Gary. And once again, don't forget to uh, send your questions and comments to... Uh, uh, Talking golf at gmail.com or call the hotline at 516 619 6341. And before I forget, we did have a, uh, uh, a call it to the hotline, and that was our good friend Jerry from Long Island. And Jerry is our prognosticator in the uh, house, and he is picking Dustin Johnson to win the match play championship. And don't forget, next week it is a light schedule as the uh, PGA has the Accenture World Match Play Tournament. Actually, the whole world will be there, all the top 64 players in the world, except for uh, Phil Mickelson and Paul Casey, who are skipping the event. And let's see, Luke Donald is defending that championship. And for those that did not make the match play championship. There's the Mayakoba Golf Classic, where Johnson Wagner is defending that title. And uh, LPGA, the ladies are playing at the HSBC Women's Championship, and Carrie Webb was last year's winner. 
So that's going to wrap it up for this week. And I uh, hope you'll enjoy all those tournaments. And we'll be back again next week to fill you in and recap all of that and all of the other golf news. So until then, have a great week. And we'll see you again on the next edition of Talking Golf with Gary. <laughs>